1548, in the small town of Nola, Italy, a boy was born who would one day see farther than most dared to dream. His name was Filippo Bruno. From an early age he carried questions too large for the world around him. The church told him the universe was fixed, finite and known. But to young Bruno, those limits felt like a cage. He imagined stars not as mere lights in the sky, but as suns like our own, each with their own worlds, perhaps even their own life. At fifteen he joined the Dominican monastery, taking the name Giordano. There, surrounded by books, he learned the language of scholars and the weight of holy doctrine. Yet the more he studied, the more he saw cracks in the stories he was told. Faith demanded obedience. Bruno demanded truth. His ideas were dangerous. He denied that the earth was the center of creation. He claimed God's presence was infinite, stretching across endless worlds. And in a time when questioning the church was a death sentence, Bruno questioned everything. He wandered Europe for years, teaching, debating, and leaving scandal in his wake. Kings and scholars were fascinated yet frightened of him. He was too bold for safety, too brilliant for silence. In 1592, he returned to Italy under the promise of friendship. Instead, he was betrayed and handed to the Inquisition. Eight years in prison followed, his captors offered him life if he would only recant. He refused. Perhaps they warned, you do not understand your sentence. Bruno's answer was cold. Perhaps you do not understand it better than I. On the morning of February 17, 1600, in Rome's Campo de Fiori, they led him to the stake. His hands were bound. His tongue was chained. But his eyes were unflinching, as if fixed on the endless cosmos he had always described. When the flames rose, he did not beg for mercy. He met death with the same defiance with which he had lived, knowing that truth was larger than any prison and the universe far greater than any creed. Today, a bronze statue stands where his ashes fell, facing the sky. Eight. It is said that Bruno still looks upward, not toward heaven as others imagine it, but toward infinity, the place where his mind had always wandered.